Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterell here, and welcome to this week's episode of The MMA Show. This is going to be a pretty quiet week for us. There are no Canadian mixed martial arts events happening in Canada. That being said, we do have two great Canadian fighters fighting around the world this weekend. Starting off on Saturday night, we will have Kyle the Monster Nelson. He'll be fighting Bill Algio at the UFC Fight Night in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, Kyle is in a great spot in his career right now. He uh, he started off a little bit slow in his UFC anyway. He did really well in the Canadian local scene. A little bit rough at the start of his UFC career. And now he's riding a two-fight win streak. He's got a new UFC contract. So stick around and you'll hear my talk with Kyle and you'll hear his thoughts on that and how he's evolved as a fighter and just why he's sitting so pretty right now and he's just really happy. It's really interesting how uh, when mixed martial arts first started joining the conversation as a legitimate combat sport, because of course when it started, uh, it was poo-pooed by a lot of the a lot of the conservatives and a lot of the boxing people, and they just didn't like it. They thought it was gross and all that kind of stuff. One of the the ways that MMA was compared to boxing was that uh, boxing people would look at mixed martial artists and think, "Oh, that guy's got like a five and four record. He's terrible," or or something similar, right? And the reality is that. In mixed martial arts, a, a perfect record is not nearly as important as it is in boxing. Now, I'm not a huge boxing aficionado. No, I, I know it somewhat, but I by no way claim, claim to be an expert. But I think in boxing, it's really important for you to try to get as best to a perfect record as you can, right? You know, a loss is a, a very bad thing in boxing. Two losses is terrible. You get three losses, I mean, your career might as well be over. And in mixed martial arts, it's completely different. You can get fighters who who take time, right? It's it's mixed martial arts is so varied and widespread the skill set. It takes time and years, if not decades, to become proficient in all of them, right? Uh, we're seeing it a little bit different now, where the kids are coming up and they're learning it, starting at eight years old. They're doing jujitsu, and by the time they're 16, 17 years old, they're absolute killers. I know it. Niagara top team, a young man I know named Aiden Appel. Uh, you heard that name from me first. He is going to be a world champion someday. He just had his first MMA fight, and he won. He's 16. No, I think he just turned 17. Uh, I knew him since he was a very young man. He trained with my daughter doing jiu-jitsu. So that's just one example of how fighters are, are getting better these days, and that includes the current crop of fighters. So Kyle is definitely in a, in a great spot. So uh, make sure you listen out for my chat with him in just a few minutes. Uh, before we get to Kyle, though, let's talk about James the Suplex Kid Clark. Uh, he is, uh, uh, you might not have heard him before. I know that my viewers, some of them are are pretty steadfast in watching all the, the major promotions like UFC, Bellator, even PFL now these days. Uh, but maybe they don't get a chance to go to too many local shows or there isn't a lot of local coverage around the country. I do my best, but I can only really get to the Ontario-based events right now. I, I hope to be doing some more traveling soonish, and I'd love to go to a, to a BFL, for example. And I, I did one samurai. I'd love to do more samurais. And I'd love to go up to FLA in, in the Maritimes. Uh, so that'll be happening sooner. I think this year with me, you'll see more of that coverage. Uh, but because of you know that reason, some of the local fighters, I'll call them local fighters, maybe don't get the coverage or the exposure that, that some of the bigger name fighters do. And James is one of those. James's last fight was last June at the Durham Fight Series number one with a nice victory. And James has been fighting for a long time. He is, he's, in my opinion, he's UFC worthy currently. So where he is right now, you'll you'll hear from him about his experience uh, training in Thailand right now and just some of the big names he's being exposed to, like Kevin Gastelum and some of the trainers. Uh, hopefully with a nice win at this event, James will get his name out there and get a little more recognition. Hopefully he can get signed because he's definitely he's definitely can do some damage in there. So that's exciting. All right. Uh, next week, I do have a pretty big story to talk about. I don't want to share too much right now, but uh, it's it's a long time coming, and I don't know if I'll have the full story. And I was hoping to to delay. I know I'm being a little cryptic right now, uh, but um, this is a long time coming to get the story out there. I don't want to say too much because I don't have all the information yet, but the time, time is not my friend. And so the story is coming out now. Um, through side channels like it's being expressed in the mixed martial arts community and i will be doing my best to expose what i know and that'll be next week um i might not have everything but i'll tell you what i know next week i know uh sorry that might not satisfy you right now but i guess that's why that's a cliffhanger right you'll just have to make sure you tune in next week all right let's get going let's talk with kyle nelson first kyle the monster nelson welcome to the mma show yeah thanks for having me on it's good to see you. It's been a while. You, I, I'm, I'm used to seeing you in person. So when and on camera through the internet interviews, uh, not something I'm used to with you. How are things going? 
Everything's going great. We drove down uh, down here to Atlantic City. We left on Monday, did half the trip, and then did the rest yesterday, and got here in time to do all the uh, you know the fighter check in and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, when you say we, who's we? So my fiance came with me, and our our new baby Knox, who was born a week ago today, and then my mother in law Mary came down to to help with baby Knox. That's amazing. So Knox is an international traveler already at one <laughs> week old. Yep. Wow, that had me beat. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> so, how, what's it like being a, a brand? I I know you've you've got several other children, other boys already. What's it like being a a father again? It's awesome. Uh, you know, it's it's been a little bit. My my other son Griffin is four, and then my son before him Corbin, he's nine. So it's been a few years, but uh, you know, it's you know, it's like riding a bike comes back. That's awesome. I wonder if you look back, if you look in your fight career. Have you ever had any like really great victories right after you had one of your boys? Because maybe he he's a he's a good luck omen for you. Uh he's definitely going to be a good luck omen. It's uh it's hard to to remember. I think um yeah, because it was so long ago, like four years ago when Griff was born. Uh, my first son Corbin, he was born like 2014, so it would be like another four years before I got in the UFC. Uh, but I know I won a bunch of fights after that one. So, uh, but yeah, definitely definitely plan to win this one Saturday and. And uh, yeah, we can dedicate this one to Knox. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. That's that'd be a, a feather in his cap um, to start his life, which is fantastic. So, Kyle, if I'm, I, I went back before we talked just now. I went back and I looked at some of our previous interviews, and one of the questions I asked you in the past, you had a difficult time answering. Uh, I asked you, wh- and this is a couple of years ago, probably a year and a half, couple of years ago. I asked you where you thought Kyle Nelson was in relation currently in relation to what your final form, your ultimate best fighter of your of your life where you were and you weren't really sure i'm wondering if you have any chance to to think about that and think now like how good a fighter are you right now compared to where you ultimately want to be at the end of your career yeah i definitely think i'm I'm getting close now i think we've got a, a lot of the little things dialed in you know there's still there's always going to be techniques and skills that i want to improve and that's probably something i'll never be satisfied with mm-hmm. but i think you know the way we have our my weight cut styled in you know my life outside the cage has has you know gotten so much better and and so much more organized and stuff like that that i find that plays a big part in my career as well i mean having that that work life balance and the the family balance as well i think mm-hmm. i've been able to put that all together much better now and that in turn helps my you know my career in the ufc yeah we've talked about that before about about the balance about the importance of making time for your family and your, and your kids. I mean, so you see so many fighters now who they're so devoted and I'm not saying you're not devoted, but it seems like they, they feel if they miss one training session on one day of one week of a year, then that's it. They're, they're not working as hard as they could be. But I think there's definitely something to making sure you feed the other part of you that, ha- that has needs as well, the, the human needs. Yeah, absolutely. And again, when I was younger, I was just like that. Like I wanted to, you know, go to every session. I was pushing myself 100% all the time. And then, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, career wise, you end up getting injured a lot when you kind of overtrain and stuff like that. And then, you know, your, your friendships, maybe your relationships, even your, you know, your time with your parents and stuff really kind of falls by the wayside. And then life just kind of gets miserable, you know, and then what's the point in even being successful or, or making money or doing any of that stuff if you don't have the people around you to, you know, spend the time with? Yeah, for sure. One of the things I really like, well, I like a lot about you, but I, I do follow you on Facebook. And one thing I really enjoy is when you make your often posts about just spending family time, you're taking your boys to the woods or you're doing something or you're doing whatever, just being out and about. And I know that it's, it's tough to really say that social media is is 100% representation of real life. Like, I don't know what it's really like, but I get the impression that you're just a really good father and a really good man and a a good family member. Yeah, I mean, I I try my best, you know. Um, I don't get to see my my sons, Corbin and Griffin, too often. So I try to make sure that when I do see them, you know, I'm I'm introducing them to to my lifestyle and and kind of how I want them to grow up and, and what values and, and virtues and stuff like that I want to try and instill in them. So, and that's, that's what you get on, on the social media, you know, whether we're, we're hunting or fishing or doing some outdoor stuff or, you know, even exercising my, my youngest son, Griffin, he's in love with pushups now. So he, he throws some pushups down all the time. So yeah, I mean, just doing, you know, the best I can for, for my kids and my family. 
yeah, that's all you can do is the best you can. I was, uh, I've got a, a daughter myself and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm fallible. I'm not a perfect human, but I try and, uh, you know, I, I just hope I can be there for her and like you seem to be for your kids. So, uh, you know, I love that. Okay. So let's move on now to, uh, fighting, right? So you are fighting this weekend against Bill Algio at the UFC fight night in Atlantic city. Tell me your thoughts on this fight. How did this come about? And when you were off for this fight, did you know who Bill was? And, and did you think, uh, you know, what did you think about him as an opponent? Yeah, so I definitely I remember, I think, Bill's first fight coming into the UFC, and, I, and I've been paying attention to him ever since then. Um, and so I knew he'd be probably some of that cross path with, pass with. Um, so, I mean, as far as his style, like a, he's got, again, a, a stand up, more so striker style, but it's kind of like a Taekwondo or karate style where he's, he's light on his feet. He's got his hands down a bit. He switches stances. Uh, he's a little bit taller. I think he's like six foot. But um, again, I've fought, you know, tall strikers in, in Fernando Padilla and Jai Herbert. And I've fought some kind of trickier strikers before as well. So it's nothing I haven't seen before. On the ground, I believe he's a brown belt. And uh, he's, got, he's got pretty good jits. But uh, I've been training jiu-jitsu for 18 years now. I'm technically, you know, a brown belt also. But I definitely think I'm getting close to, to getting my black belt. So I feel like on the ground and on the feet, it's... Uh, I can edge him out a little bit everywhere. And that's that's all you're going to get in the UFC. I mean, everybody's good at wrestling, at striking and stuff. So the best you can do is try and find an area where you're going to be a little bit better and then try and exploit that area. Yeah. And for this fight, like my, my fiance had kind of one stipulation, you know, coming into the new year was I could, I could take a fight or whatever, just not in March. And then, of course, the, the fight came down the line to fight Bill Algio. And it was March 30th. Like, ah, oh, well, our, our due date was March 12th. So I ran it by my fiance. Like, what do you think? It's the end of the month. You know, Knox should be here. We'll have a couple of weeks to settle in and, and get used to that stuff. And she's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. And obviously, Bill Eljo being a great opponent as far as where he's kind of at in the rankings. And, you know, I think it's a good step up for me. And, uh, yeah, so so she was on board. So then I was on board. And, and then Knox decided to wait a little bit. He, you know, he... He hung out there a little bit longer than we expected, but, uh, you know, everything's here now and we're good to go. Was that a little nerve wracking wondering when he, when he was going to come? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned. I know he was going to come at some point. Right. But, uh, my, my fiance definitely wanted to, to make sure she was able to come down and stuff like that. So I'm sure her nerves were, were going pretty good. Okay. That's good. Uh, I'm going to get crucified by some of the female viewers. If, if I don't ask you, you keep referring to her as your fiance. What's her name? Claudia. <laughs> Claudia is my, my fiance. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I've met her a couple of times. Very nice lady. You're a very lucky man. You've got a beautiful family. Yeah, thank uh, so, you. So you've uh you, you when you started your UF career, you were a killer in, in Canada. You went to the UFC, it was a little spotty at the stop, you know, you had a couple losses here and there, but you're on a good great track now. You've got two foot two wins, two great wins, you've got a new UFC contract. Uh you must be feeling pretty good about where you're sitting right now. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely feels like everything's finally coming together. I know when I first got into the UFC, I was like, oh, that's it. You know, I've made it. We're here now. And then, yeah, it just, it just didn't quite work out that way. I kind of had to recalibrate some stuff, you know, with the, the training camps and the, the weight cutting and stuff like that. And now that we've got everything dialed in, it definitely feels like I'm here now. And now I'm ready, you know, to start, you know, putting in some actual work and stuff. So. Yeah, well, it's working out well for you, and uh, I guess this weekend we'll see. It's the next step on your journey to be to being a UFC fighter and uh, hopefully someday UFC champion. So, uh, Kyle, I, I know that fight week is always really hectic, and there's a lot of commitments and people asking for your time, so I truly appreciate you taking the time to spend with us. Uh, before we get going, is there anything you'd like to say, and what you'd like to thank? Yeah, I mean, thanks a lot for having me on here and always promoting, you know, local MMA. You're the place I always go to check for, you know, the, you know, the event, the results and stuff from all of our local shows. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And then, yeah, thank you to my, my coaches, uh, you know, Alin, Adrian, um, all my sponsors, my fiance. Um, make sure you check out my social media. I've got all my sponsors on there. You know, if you're looking for, you know, whether it's rehab or, you know, Sheath Underwear, we've got the Sport Lab, Moose Delaney, Shoeless Joe, you know, everything's everything's there. So make sure you check it out and give them a follow too. Will do, Kyle. Well, once again, thanks for your time and best of luck this weekend. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, I'm really happy with Kyle. And 
you know, some of the times when I when I talk with fighters or I talk with people about talking about fighters, they they you know they look at journalists as somebody who's just trying to get a story out. And I am to a degree, right? Like I love a good story. I love getting stories out, but I also treat it like getting to know the people and all that stuff I said about Kyle and his family. I mean, the fight stuff is important. Yeah, you're coming here for the fight stuff. But at the end of the day, fighters are people just like you and me, right? We all have our our, our peculiarities. We all have our differences. We all have the ways we, we run our lives outside of work. And I just love the way Kyle, you know, he's such a family man. I absolutely love it. I know a lot of you are too. It's just that Kyle, it's, it's right out front and center for me to see. So uh, I hope you appreciate that too. Okay, uh, so let's go on to James Clark. Uh, I mentioned I talked about him for about a minute back, uh, you know, before the, the Kyle interview. Uh, James is a really good interview. He's got the gift of the gab, and I'm not saying that disparagingly at all. I absolutely love it. Sometimes when I speak with fighters, it's a challenge if I ask a question and they give me back a one word answer. Oh, yep, nope, or yeah, I agree. It's nice if I ask a question and they can just run with it. And so James is. is doing great uh, at some point i'd like to start doing more long form interviews uh, i guess they're like a podcast that i've talked about before uh, i think james is definitely uh, you know i knew he was interesting before but not as interesting after speaking with him now for uh, 14 minutes or something like that so it's well worth it make sure you listen if only to hear about uh the little girl's life that he saved while training in thailand so that's pretty fantastic all right let's go james clark great to talk to you today sir how are you doing great how, how are you doing Andy? thanks for having me on Hey, it's my pleasure. Uh, for the people watching right now, tell them where you are right now. Yeah, I'm in Phuket, Thailand, obviously uh, halfway across the world from uh, Canada, but uh, I'm in my happy place and uh, it's it's fight week. So, you know, no complaints here. I'm just uh, excited for soul season. <laughs> soul season, that's right. You are fighting this upcoming weekend in Phuket against Colt Kilbasa at a new, uh, I guess it's more like one of those new hybrid promotions, right? There's different styles of fights on it. There's Muay Thai, there's mixed martial arts. I'm not sure if there's others. And uh, you're fighting an MMA fight, MMA fight, obviously. Tell me what you yeah. know about M2 Global, or sorry, M2 MMA and how they contacted you and became aware of you and vice versa. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it is a mixed event. They do a bit of that type of stuff down here in Thailand. Um, obviously, uh, you know, the the rules are a little different here. And uh, obviously, we're in the birthplace of Muay Thai. So you'll see a little bit more of those type of uh, events. It's a, yeah, it's a new promotion, similar to uh, the last one I just fought on that my uh, coaches and managers threw on uh, during a fight series. So um, yeah, they're, they're not established yet, but uh, just super grateful to be helping them build it up and, you know, get, get my hand raised is obviously the main goal. Uh, George Hickman down here, I've known him since I was about 20 years old. Um, yeah, 29 now, so like nine years. This is my sixth trip down here. Obviously, uh, COVID made it a little hard to get down here for a couple of years, but uh, he, he got me the fight and... Um, yeah, just super grateful. All these guys have uh, been uh, taking me under their wing, like his brother Frank Hickman as well, um, the wrestling coach for all those guys at uh, City Kickboxing, Volkanovski, um, Israel Sonia, Kai Kara France, like that whole team. Uh, Frank has been the main uh, wrestling coach, I think, uh, for their whole careers, basically. So, um you know, that's, uh, that's obviously means a lot that he's, you know, giving me personals and spending his time. Um, I, I met his brother, George, the older brother first, actually, and just super, uh, super high level dudes, like, you know, um, uh, along with my team back home, Justin Bruckman, um, he's cornered many UFC guys as well, but, uh, you know, it just, it means a lot that they've all kind of uh, big brothered me down here. And, uh, you know, this is a little bit different trip uh, having a fight this time, obviously, right? Uh, in the past, I've just been, uh, I've just been training for fights back home. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, Brad Riddell, the kickboxing coach down here as well. Um, I think he's had like four or five fights in the UFC, um, maybe even more than that. Um, he, he's also took me under his wing. Um, it, it's just super, uh, super grateful and, uh, definitely helping my confidence and, and my overall game. When it, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that 
you know, you just said you go to Thailand often for, for training camps. Did you go to yep. Thailand this time with knowing that there'd be a fight coming up out of this, or was it something just sp sprung on you and you were given the opportunity? No, um, I was here, uh, I was here two months, well, I've been here for, this will be three months uh, by the end of my trip. I, I have a flight booked for the day after um, the fight, but, you know, I never make plans, uh, I never make plans for after the fight, you know, you never know. You never know exactly what you're getting into. So, uh, you know, if I had to switch my plane for a day or two or whatever, uh, so be it. But, uh, yeah, I'm leaving the day after, which happens to be April Fool's. So <laughs> no joke there. But, uh, yeah, I, I was here two months prior to this trip as well. My coach, uh, Joe Elliott, the owner of Big Country, and uh, he's got like three gyms now doing super good. Me and him started, he's the one who got me into MMA and uh, obviously got him tattooed on my leg. You know, a uh, lot, lot I have of him. We grew up in this game together. So, uh, but um, this Dr. Lane, one of my top sponsors, uh, shout out to Lane's uh, Optical. He, uh, he just said, hey, Joe, uh, you want to go to Thailand with me? Uh, I'll take you to James's spot in Thailand. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit... Uh, I've been trying to get Joe to come out here for uh, years. Uh, obviously, uh, I didn't have the funds to, uh, you know, just mm -hmm. take him here. But uh, he booked his trip uh, with Buddy, and I already had this trip already booked. So I was like, screw it. I wanted Joe to see Thailand through my eyes. So I, yeah. I came, I booked a trip, and I was down here with them. And I was telling, I, I always tell George, uh, George Hickman, uh, he's, um, one of the main uh, MMA coaches down here. He lives here down here full time as well. So uh, I'm always bugging him for a fight, have been for years. So um, yeah, nothing came in right away. And then I was down here for about a month already. And then he got this offer for Colton and uh, he said, you want it? Um, I had to extend my trip to pull it all off. So uh, he said, just let me ask the babysitter of my uh, my dog, which happens to be my mother right now, um, she's all right with it. And, uh, you know, she wasn't very impressed at the start, but, uh, she, uh, she didn't need, uh, she didn't need course and just, uh, you know, she understands the MMA, uh, dream waits for no one. Um, you know, in, in dog years, uh, I've, I've three months is probably like over a year now in dog years, I've missed in my dog's life. So, you know, it's uh it sucks but uh at the same sense this mma journey it's uh you know uh, the every fight's a little bit different but it, it waits for no one and your training session can let uh your your mma journey can end in a training session so you know i had to take full advantage of this and uh that's exactly what i did it's it's really important that you you grab these opportunities. I mean, I, I know so many fighters, and I've got to speak with so many fighters over the years, and and a perpetual issue for them, a lot of them, is the struggle to find reliable fights that will actually put on an event, schedule a fight, sign a contract, and have the fight go through. So many yeah. fighters, you know, they end up not even fighting once a year just because of so many issues. How important yeah. is it for you to be always ready and, and training and be prepared to, to grab these opportunities when they come to you? Yeah, I know the more, the older I get, the more experienced I get and knowledgeable on this, uh, this subject, actually. Uh, it's been on my mind a lot lately because, uh, yeah, like I, I haven't fought in about eight or nine months, when, however long June, June was. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, we're going on almost a year. And, um, yeah, I think I've made a few mistakes. Uh, obviously, I had a one in three pro record at one point in my career. And now I'm eight and three and haven't lost in six years. My last loss being to Mateo Vogel uh, at 135, and he's not even a 35er anymore. He's a 45er, but yeah. uh, no excuses. There's no excuses in this game. I was smoking cigarettes. I was doing dumb shit. Um, I needed to. Uh, I needed to eat the humble pie a bit. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, as far as the MMA scene back in Canada, like I said, on the mistakes as well. I uh, well, I started my journey. Uh, signing a five fight contract with one of the dirtiest promotion promoters in the game, one of the best promotions, but one of the dirtiest promotion promoters in the game, Stephen Petrie. And, uh, you know, I think 
to an extent, as a promoter, you had to put yourself first before the fighters as well to build your brand. I think that is part of it. Um, you know, like uh, the whole Don King thing. But, uh, you know, I, not too many people. Uh, Patri screwed over a lot of other people. Um, I, I don't blame him for my losses. Those are my losses. But, uh, you know, he was only offering me out of weight class fights and, uh you know, just signing a five-fight contract out of the gate as a debut fighter, it, it really made me not trust these promoters very well. So, yeah, I got it. So I kind of hopped around. I hopped around a little bit. Um, you know, I have, I have four titles um, from three, uh, three different organizations alone. Um, that kind of speaks for itself. Uh, I, I didn't really trust any of these promotions. So I, I, I wouldn't really sign anything more than a two fight one year contract just because a lot of them you know like Nate Diaz was talking about last couple of weeks ago like a lot of these guys they don't they don't want you to see the end of the contract um, and it just put my trust that I, I didn't really trust but then I see these other guys and it works well for them uh, when they do have that bond of trust and with the promotion as well like you look at that Tommy Morrison kid um, you know not I guess not to say he's fought fighting complete bums. He beat my buddy Matt Dawson, so like mm -hmm. that's a fairly good win. But like uh, that's his best win actually uh, in my eyes. But uh, Dawson was had a fought four hundred or four and four record like myself uh, at the time, and he's fighting uh, he's fighting a guy who's like five and zero oh or something at mm -hmm. the time. So uh, on paper, it's just like. I don't know. I think he's trying to look for the easier fights, and that one just happened to be a, a real tough fight because Dawson's an animal and fought everybody yeah, under he's the a sun. Dog for sure. Yeah, he's a dog, right? But um, you know, not to put Tommy down. I think he's doing it proper. He's got a really good team around him and stuff. We we've trained once before too, so he he don't really he knows he's not ready to fight anyone like me. But I think a guy like that can get to the big show. I just don't think he's gonna stay there very. Like, uh, he'll be lucky to, uh, you know, even like TJ Laramie, he got there a little bit early, but like, I, I think TJ Laramie has a win over Charles Jordan and Charles is still there. So it's like yeah. styles make matchups. And, um, if you look at it, there's not very many fights for me back in Canada period. Um, uh, anyone could say what they want. Why don't you fight Tony or Louie or something? But like, you know, if you look at uh, Tommy Morrison, Louis Jordan, and uh, and Tony Laramie, all four of us have fought Mexicans in our last fight. Like, yeah, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I I I get it. Like, I, I'm not I'm not saying that I was any but any better. But um, and uh, props to Tony and Louis. They were about to fight, but hey, that was just. Louis got hurt, and that just ended up being talk. You know, like it is what it is. The fight hasn't been rebooked. Um, Tony hasn't rebooked a tough fight. I'm sure he could have. Um, and I, I got a guy who's got a win in one championship next week. So like, I, I figure, I figure I'm the I'm the number one guy out of Canada right now. I I smoke this guy, and I'm I'm on the big show, like uh, potentially. So. I feel like uh, all four of us are right there at the door, but Canada just, I feel like each promotion is only building the guys they want, you know, one at a time. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of disagree with you, disagree with you a little bit. Uh, I think you're starting to see a lot more collaboration and working together between different Canadian fight promotions. Uh, for example, like BFL, Unified, Samurai, they seem to be letting their fighters travel across the country and fight for their other organizations, which is, is great for the fighters. And we're sort of getting away from that promotion first mentality that you, you alluded to. So I don't know. I, I, I think that's really cool and I'm, I'm really liking it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I definitely seen that. Uh, I seen that one or two times with, uh, with the cross promotions like that, which was super cool. I, I'm, I'm all for that. Like, these guys shouldn't be acting like they're UFC already, although, like, yeah. they're helping guys like us get to the UFC. And it's also super cool that, like, Samurai, Unified, 
and BFL are all on UFC Fight Pass. Like, that's huge. We have three promotions out of Canada now that are all on UFC Fight Pass. I'm only the BTC champ. They're the only ones that aren't on Fight Pass. <laughs> knock, knock. Hopefully they, uh, they get there. Because they've had, they've had awesome shows as well. And uh, I do believe they can get there as well. Um, yeah, I, I just see it like it just seems to be in the flyweight division. There's only so ma- many of us. There's only about, there's only four guys now. Tommy just getting to the point now where he's uh, like, he has a record now where he can fight me, Tony, or Louie. Like, mm-hmm. there's, there's ultimately no one else in Canada Canadians that can fight us right now. If they do, it's like I feel like they're getting fed to the wolves. Um, in my eyes, obviously, it's a tough division, I, for sure. I, I, I don't. I don't like to be one of those people that uh, act like my opinions are facts either. Like these are just opinions. People that uh, I hate those guys that are like, what I say is definitely right. Like because because I talk a lot of shit myself. And uh, <laughs> hey. Um, it is what it is. I fought Louis and Tony. Those are my only two losses as an amateur. Like, like I said, I was still smoking cigarettes when I fought Mateo as a pro. So, uh, it it is what it is. Um, those are definitely fights I want uh, in the future. Like, but I'm I'm never one of those type of people to uh, you know. I have a fight that's in front of me. Uh, nothing else matters. Like, uh, a, a win is a step forward, and a loss is two steps back. Uh, mm-hmm. I heard Robin Black say that one time when uh, Lindsay uh, Lindsay Garbot, I believe she was fighting, um, she was fighting Ashley Nichols that night. Uh, rest mm-hmm. in peace uh, to Ashley. Obviously, that was super sad. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, I think men- mental health isn't something that gets talked about enough as well. Just to touch on that, like. Uh, you know, you were at my last fight as well. Um, you know, I'm a very emotional dude myself, especially in fight week. Um, you know, I, I always quit smoking weed and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it fucks with your emotions a little bit. Uh, I always mm-hmm. quit the whole camp. I go without it. But, you know, to, to live my life, I feel like I needed a little bit outside of it. It just doesn't mix with my fighting anymore. Cigarettes definitely didn't. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, that whole thing with Ashley, that was super sad. Like, uh, I think we all have our own own demons, and I feel like, uh, as a man especially, um, and as a fighter, those are, like, two things that are, like, you know, it almost puts guys in that category, and, like, not to take anything away, like, look at what happened with uh, Ashley, like, it just, it, it, as a man, it's, like, it's not, you're not, like, supposed to talk about these things or something, mm-hmm. right, like, I've turned a bit of a leaf on that, um, and especially, like I said, when I'm in the camp and stuff, but something I'm a little more open with, I'm a little more, uh, like to talk about it or touch on it, because, uh, you know, you never know the type of messages you get and stuff after, like, uh, a lot of times, uh, I've had, I've cut some really good promos after my fights, um, and then I've cut some ones where I went a little, you know, I went, uh, you know, I went full retard, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, they weren't the best, but that's just, that's just me, you know, I'm, uh, take it as you get it, you know, so, uh, like I said, you gotta take the good with the bad, I've cut some really good ones, and then, uh, went a little overboard on some, but, uh, you know, that, that's just the fight business, I think we're all dealing with stuff, especially, like, as fighters, not just as fighters, but, like, uh, you know, yeah, I just, it's uh, not just fighters. It's, 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 it's there, there's so much to. T- I mean, we could talk about this for hours. There's so much, and it's it's people. People have people have problems, and yes. just because we're two guys sitting here talking, I think men have a much more difficult time. Find number one, finding somebody that they can be close enough to to actually share what they're feeling, because a lot of times men are judged by emotions. Uh, I think right. fairly so, and then even if we do have someone close, I mean. Men, men I, I don't think express ourselves verbally as much as, as maybe, maybe women do. Like we'll go mm-hmm. say if you're say if you and I are buddies and you're having a rough day, you're going to be like, Hey Andy, come on over. Let's, let's, uh, you know, work on this car engine or we're going to go, you know, chop some wood or something like that. That's how we kind of deal with it. So right. that's why I think, I think fighting is, is such a good thing because 
it it allows you to use your body, which is a good thing. It gets your endorphins flowing. It it just makes you feel mm-hmm. good when you when you train, right? So, I mean, yeah. it's got to be a benefit to to your line of work. Definitely, definitely, and uh, yeah, as much as it's a benefit, it's a downfall as well because it's like uh, the highs are so high, right, and the lows are so low. Like uh, like we were kind of touching on my last win a year ago. It's like it keeps me in the gym, obviously, like that. It's like uh, I've had problems with drugs before, obviously. I'm not just talking about weed and shit. And I've, I've lost like 50 plus friends, not necessarily wow. good friends, but like uh, at least people 50 do. plus people that I know, ex girlfriends, even to fentanyl and stuff. And it's like I've seen some dark stuff. I actually saved a little girl. I saved a little girl like right in front of the truck last week. So it's like felt like a hero like that's probably like one of the only times that I ever like I've obviously done great things in my life but I've done a lot of bad shit too so like tell me that story about saving a little girl what happened there yeah like uh so I I checked my weight uh had a little bit of a sore neck uh three weeks out it was like uh it was one of those things I had to be like I need someone like Justin Bruckman and shit and like guys that like protect me from myself because it's like a little sore neck ain't gonna like three weeks out from the biggest fight of my life like I'm I'm gonna just turn it up, right? Like yeah. Mm-hmm. A week out is when you get to heal. Like obviously it's all good now. There's no excuses. I'm feeling amazing. Uh my camp's basically done. I'm just coasting. But so I didn't go to wrestling practice. I went, but I had to do something. So I went I went on the air dime for like a half hour and stuff. And then anyway, uh make it long story here. Uh I uh I went and checked my weight because I'm like very obsessive with the weight, especially two weeks out. I'm like, mm-hmm. gotta check the weight, gotta check the weight. Even though it's like Thailand, I could be eating like, I had cheesecake yesterday, you know what I'm saying? I could eat whatever the fuck I wanted and probably still make weight, but like I know what benefits and whatnot. But anyway, so sure. I, I go, I'm like, oh, I gotta check my weight, Blake. So I go to check my weight and then uh, literally that split second of checking my weight, I come out, there's a three-year-old little girl, maybe she, she's like two and a half feet tall type deal. She runs, almost gets smoked by a scooter first. And then um, I guess it looked like the woman or her mom watching her had like a five-year-old uh, boy with her too. Um, so she was trying to watch like two kids, I guess. And then, um, so that's just what it looked like from my angle. But she was like about five, five or six feet in front of me already running across the street to go and it's a fairly busy street uh all the streets in thailand are like that but Mm -hmm. it was about the size of a garbage truck big big garbage truck and she almost gets hit hit by the scooter she made it past the scooter the scooter dodged her and then i could see her still going forward towards this she was right in front of this garbage truck and because i could see it like i had to run to catch up with her but i i used my voice and i was like I stopped, like, I, I caused a scene with my voice, I think, but, like, I don't even know if that stopped the truck or not, but, like, I literally had to jump in front of this fucking garbage truck, and I had to pick this little girl up, like, like, I, I was probably, like, it was one of those things, like, I've, like I said, I've done some bad shit in my time, it was, like, I've seen guys where it's, like, you know, there's always a couple guys where it's, like, they see cops, and then they're, like, they're like they turtle and they freeze up and stuff for anything right but like uh, everything slows down just like in a fight for me right but it's just like the hero and the coward like you don't have time they think the same right you didn't have, i didn't have time it was just so i grabbed her and uh yeah a bunch of people from the gym at bang tao seen it and stuff uh casey o'neill actually shadowed her she seen me save that little girl but all kinds of ufc uh people at the gym, Kevin Gastelum, I've been talking to him every day, it's like, Mm -hmm. but anyway, it was, uh, so then I, I get the girl, I get the little, little girl, and I go to give her to who I thought was her mom, and then the girl says, where's your mom, where's your mom, so, uh, I, I don't know, I gave the little girl to that girl, so I don't know if she was just saying that to, like, make herself, if, it looked to me like she was supposed to watch the kid, right? But uh, she she did say, like, where's your, like, so anyway, I don't know whose kid it was. I just, I, I got out of there. But, like, I, I if I would have seen that little girl get smoked by a garbage truck and, like, I just missed her by a second, that would have really, I would have, I'm already emotional dude, I said, you know?
know? Like, uh, but it it was probably like the it was the only time that I was like I made a fucking difference, you know. So it's like you put a little points in your, in your karma bank. Yeah, and and a week before that, I seen someone. I seen an old lady get smoked on a scooter, like, Jeez. and I don't know if I don't know if she lived type deal. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's like it's Thailand, right? Like, uh, you don't really know until you get down here. I've been here six times, right? I've been in a couple scooter accidents myself, just for scrapes and stuff. My buddy Blake, he wiped his scooter out a couple times too. So it's like. It, it happens down here, right? But, uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, yeah, it gives you a little bit of gratitude, right? Um, I, every time I have a fight, I always got a lot of gratitude, but some crazy shit's been happening. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, James, you know, uh, we've chatted, you and I have chatted briefly before, but nothing to this extent. And I, I didn't know what an interesting fellow you were. So uh, I definitely okay. love to speak with you again at some point. I, I, I haven't started it yet, but, uh, I want to start doing like a more of like a long form podcast series with people yeah. uh, where you spend an hour, two hours talking about the whole world and whatever you want. I definitely think you just added yourself to my list because uh, I really enjoyed <laughs> speaking with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, for yeah you too, Andy. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a talker. Like I said, sometimes when I'm smoking the weed, I don't, I don't got much to say, but uh, hey, I'm, I'm full of uh, enthusiasm now. <laughs> For, for a journalist, you're a dream because sometimes you speak with people and I've got to drag out the answers and I get like one word or two words. So, yeah. you know, meeting somebody like you, it's, it's fantastic. So before before we get going, uh, I'm going to give you a chance. Is there anybody like to thank anything you'd like to say before we go? Yeah, just shout out to all the guys that have been helping me down here, like uh, George Hickman, Frank Hickman, um, Brad Riddell, uh, Woody, the strength and conditioning coach, but uh I'm thinking those guys are likely going to be in my corner this fight, but I uh, can't leave the boys back home who, like, I'm not a self-made man here. So, um, Justin Bruckman, Joe Elliott, Gordon McVail, they're, uh, they're tattooed on my fucking leg for life. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep them, keep them close and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Um, I know, I know they're going to be in that, uh, ring with me, uh, next Sunday for sure. Regardless, like I said, they, they've built me into the man I am today. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm just proud that I get to do what I love and, uh, surrounded by greatness. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty much done my hard camp here, uh, training with the highest levels of fighters in the world. Um, I've been doing, uh, my circuits, just finished my circuit with, uh, PFL champ there, uh, Brendan, uh, he's getting ready to defend his belt. Uh, Br Bruno, um, uh, whole whack of guys that are just getting the, I'm getting the exact same treatment they are here. So just super grateful to be where I'm at. And, uh, you know, we're seven days out from soul season. So we're, we're going to make it happen. Thank, thank you, Andy. Well, thank you. That thank that was fantastic. I'm not sure if I'll be able to watch the fight. I, I haven't really looked to see if it's going to be streamed yet or not. But uh, if I can watch the fight, I will. And if I don't, uh, I wish you the best of luck and kick some butt. Yeah, I, I think it'll be 7 a.m. Uh, your time. It'll be on YouTube, Instagram, bunch of things. Just follow M2, and uh, if you don't see it live, I'm sure you'll catch it. Uh, you'll catch it anyway. Maybe stay off the internet till you till you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, thanks for everything. Good luck. All right, man. Thanks again. You take care. There you go. What do you think? So M2 MMA, I don't know where that's going to go. Um, the truth is mixed martial arts promotions around the world come and go. And uh, we'll see. This is going to be a first event for them. Hopefully it turns out well. Hopefully James does well, gets a nice win and some recognition and either fights with them again or moves on to bigger and better things. Regardless, uh, it's great. I love mixed martial arts. You love mixed martial arts. Let's uh, just keep watching and wish everybody success. Okay, that's it. A short and sweet one for this week, but uh, make sure you tune in to, to UFC Fight Pass. And uh, I'm not, no, sorry. I'm not sure if Kyle's going to Fight Pass or not, but watch the, the fight night tomorrow night on Saturday night. And if you can, I don't think there's a streaming for, for James's fight. Uh, oh, I take that back. There might be, and I'll see if I can post where, where you can watch that. I'm going to try to watch it myself. Uh, and uh, that's it, Fight Friends. Keep watching the fights, and I will see you next week.